thank you for the invitation to speak today about the principles of um, cross-linking. So keratoconus is, arises um, due to the generation of the extracellular matrix, which manifests in the loss of collagen fiber orientation, corneal thinning, and final biomechanical weakening. So the aim of corneal cross-linking is to increase biomechanical resistance of the cornea and hence to stop the ECM degeneration. So um, increasing corneal stiffness can be done with cross-linking either chemically or with radiation. So chemically there are formaldehyde, uh, glutaraldehyde, or radiation such as UV light in combination with a photosensitizer. So these graphs show the first tests to induce cross-links in the corneal stroma. And although um, we see a similar efficacy of chemical and radiation techniques, um, the, chemical, no, the UV light in combination with riboflavin has been proven to be the most versatile um, as it can be dosed very uh, locally limited and also the um, penetration depth is very controlled. So corneal cross-linking um, requires the following steps. First, the epithelialization in order to apply the photosensitizer during 30 minutes. Then uh, this is followed by a 30 minute session of UVA irradiation at three milliwatt per square centimeters. And this results in a um, significant stiffening of the corneal tissue. So in order to have the collagen cross-linking working properly, we need a good combination of wavelength and photosensitizer. So in this graph, we see the absorption peaks of riboflavin. And so in order to um, choose the right wavelength now, we have to uh, look at the individual absorption peaks. So the first two have very high UV energy, low penetration depth, and absorbed, are highly absorbed from the DNA and hence cause the innate damage. So they are not useful. Then the next peak at 365 nanometers has moderate UV energy, moderate penetration depth, not, is not absorbed from the DNA, and is actually used for a CXL the fourth absorption peak is, um, has also moderate penetration depth, but less UV energy and hence is less effective. So is collagen cross-linking safe? The normal stroma mm, doesn't absorb a huge amount of um, UV energy. However, if it is applied with uh, riboflavin, we can see that it strongly absorbs most of the applied UV energy during cross-linking. So normal corneas have a higher UV absorption and protect them for the endothelium and the crystalline lens from damage. In contrast, thin corneas um, ha don't have the potential to absorb that amount of UV energy, and hence they have, are at a higher risk of endothelial damage and a higher risk of cataract. Therefore, um, it is recommended not to, rec uh, not to perform corneal cross-linking in cornea thinner than 400 micrometers. So what is going on in the cornea if we irradiate the food sensitizer with UV light? So first, the photosensitizer gets excited to the singlet state, and then there's a chance of about 60% to, uh, for intersystem crossing, and then the, this excites the triplet state, which is much longer lived and hence allows for chemical reactions such as the generation of reactive oxygen species. Once these reactive oxygen species are created, they oxidize the extracellular matrix, lead to the formation of new crosslinks, and hence increase the mechanical stiffness of the cornea. So it is up to date, not clear where exactly the crosslinks are formed, either between collagen or proteoglycans. And so this study shows an increased molecular weight of collagen after crosslinking, and also a significant decrease of proteoglycans. So this study suggests that. Um, Crosslinks are formed among collagens, among proteoglycans, but also between collagens and proteoglycans. There are different uh, reaction me mechanisms. Type 1 mechanisms is preferred at low oxygen concentration, and here the sensitizer reacts directly with the uh, substrate to create radicals, and type 2 mechanism is preferred at high oxygen concentrations. And, um, here, a sensitizer reacts directly with oxygen and pr um, produces singlet oxygen. So this oxygen dependency has been studied in more detail. Kamev et al. showed a very fast oxygen depletion once the UV light is turned on. So within 10 to 15 seconds, there is no oxygen available. And with higher radiances, even faster. 
And the oxygen replenishment, however, is only very slow. So it takes three to four minutes. Another study has also shown no stiffening effect of the cross-linking in the absence of oxygen. So this strong oxygen dependency has led to the modification of the cross-linking protocols. The idea of pulse cross-linking is to interrupt the UV irradiation periodically to allow oxygen diffusion into the cornea, and this should increase the effect of cross-linking and shorten the irradiation time. So the clinical outcome is quite positive and shows that um, this pulse cross-linking can efficiently stop keratoconus progression and then there was no difference to the standard cross-linking treatment. However, experimental quantification showed this is a, about roughly 50% less effective treatment regarding the biomechanical stiffening effect. So another um, modification of the protocol that is aims at uh, shortening the treatment duration is, uh, is based on the bunsen rosco law of reciprocity which states that a certain biological effect directly pro is directly proportional to the total energy dose, irrespective of the administrated regime. And so this would suggest that the corneal stiffening should be directly proportional to the UV fluence. And so the idea of accelerated cross-linking is to reduce the treatment time by increasing the UV irradiance. And here, and there is a similar um, observation. The clinical outcome is quite positive and shows that it efficiently stops the keratoconus progression. However, experimental quantification demonstrates it's less effective. And so, in conclusion, we can say corneal cross-linking treatment stiffens the corneal tissue and prevents the progression of keratoconus. Cross-linking requires a photosensitizer, in this case riboflavin, UV light, uh, and oxygen. And reducing the UV irradiation time decreases the stiffening effect. This means the bunsen rosco law is not valid. And cross-linking protocols may be clinically effective, even if they have a reduced experimental stiffening effect. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And if you're more interested in corneal cross-linking, then I would like to recommend you this Congress, which is held in December this year. <laughs>